right, I'm going to show you guys some previews of what's coming. We started out with previews last week. I've got my serious, I'm now being recorded voice <laughs> instead of my other voice. I don't know what that was. I totally switched. As soon as I started recording, I like dropped an octave or something. That's weird. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, uh, Carson just showed me this, Project Fi at Google. So you could get uh, cellular service through Google, potentially. And just go to Google and search for Project Fi. That looks pretty awesome. Here's my email. And that's not where I want to go. I want to go back to Google. There we go. And so previews. Uh, and I'm recording. Yes, cool. So I'm going to change and go to documents. Documents go source GitHub goes to 11. Go lang training. And I want 55. And go out serve. What? Go run. Is it just that? No. Should be an app YAML there. Oh, I need an O2. Go app severe. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. What you have to look forward to. Go to class. Looks fine. More. Here is another thing which I need to do later. Wash the truck. Stop at the grocery store. Drive home. Fry eggs. Feed the dogs. Whoa, I'm done with more. I'm done with looks fine. Another item. So the order can maybe be improved, in which I'm doing this. Right, more just popped all the way up. Just brought it out in a random order. So just bringing them out in a random order, subsequently. Well, that's pretty cool. Right? So that's something we have to look forward to. And that's just basic data store. Put, delete, get kind of stuff. We did this at boot camp. Bob remembers it. And you want to see another preview? Ha 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 ha. Recreate Twitter. I gave it a new logo, motto. Figure it has all the deadly sins in one location envy, greed, lust, hate. Gluttony. I need more Twitter. I need to look at more tweets. It's late. I should go to sleep, but I should watch this video. Right. I don't know what other the deadly sins are. I don't know them all, but <clears throat> you know, you come to log in, you get this form. I really like design. You know, like making sure things look nice. So I think that's a, a beautiful thing. And uh, I basically, you know, uh, did not invent that layout. I was like, hey, how can I make this look good? And I was, I was basically like, how did uh, Google do it? So I figured Google knows what's up, right? So pretty much like what they have. So I just try to somewhat replicate that. And I like, you know, like they really, they really think about and study what's the process people take and what works best. Does this work best? Right? Email and password? Or does this work best? Just email. And then once you hit your email, it doesn't recognize that email. Isn't that funny? That domain's, they validate whether or not that domain exists. Joe at Ford.com. No problem. Right? But, uh, but they ask for your email first and then your password. That probably absolutely is rooted in data and it's got to be the better way to do it. You know? Like, from a user's perspective. Just uh, 
Took me a second to check two things at once. I mean, it, that's it's Google, man. They don't care about that. They're like, what is the best deliverable? You know, check it at one time, check it another time. But that might be one of the reasons why that's better, because if you get all kinds of errors, right, then you're kind of like, oh, man, two of my fields have erred. You ever filled out one of those forms, you got like seven fields that weren't right, you're like, ugh, <laughs> as opposed to one at a time. So then you could also create an account. But that's as far as I've gotten with it. So the next steps are to integrate validation, validating and putting a user account into data store. So that's common. Are you guys wowed? Isn't that nice? I mean, there's a lot to that. I'm trying to put this out, break this, uh, break this down in as uh, straightforward a way as possible. Like, let's start with the UX design. And then let's build on that and add in listen and serve. And then let's handle air handling. And then we'll abstract our templates, right? So pull out of here the HTML and put it into templates. And then we'll document our code. And how do you document code? And then integrate App Engine and use Julian Schmidt's router. And then create the login form and the user account form. And then I'll process that. And so trying to build it up step by step so it's a clear sort of let me see new, each new added feature instead of looking at an overwhelming wall of code. Right? Not just you can, that, but Caleb said make sure each step works before you go to the next one. Yeah, make sure each step works Otherwise, before you go to the next one. Oh, I, that's right. I was reflecting on that either last night or today. You guys, so, yeah, building it, you know, make sure each step works before you go to the next one. But we left off, we were looking at uh, sessions and cookies. So we saw sessions and cookies. And I said, hey, this would be a really good example to look at. Did anybody look at it? Raise your hands. So uh, <clears throat> 37. Since it's not App Engine, I type go run main go. And then I come back here. And where is it serving? On 9000. So I can log in. Wrong password. Nope, didn't work. Correct password. Let's see what we have here. First of all, under resources, cookies. And let's clear all the cookies, okay? What happens if I put in the wrong password? Cookie did get written and logged in as zero. And put in the right password. Logged in is now one, so I'm logged in and I can log out. Cookies are all gone. So we saw that last week. Did you guys look through this? Show hands. Sweet, you did. Great. You want to review it or move forward? Move forward. Okay. That's yeah, so no wonder my, I'm like, gosh, I'm having a hard time seeing my monitor. So one of the problems with doing cookies ourselves is that a uh, user can change a cookie, given enough effort and expertise, and then send back a user changed cookie so it's not secure. And so one thing you could do to make the cookies secure is you could do something called HMAC. And HMAC uh, wiki is a hash, key hashed message authentication code. And so basically that just encrypts all of your stuff. And if you want to see the beginnings of HMAC, you could go to GitHub and uh, look at Summer Bootcamp and search this repo for HMAC. 
And so uh, here are some files where the beginnings of HMAC are built up. So you can look at those. How cool is that? How many people knew you could do that at GitHub? You could just search a certain repo or something and then show it to you. Pretty neat. So, uh, so if you want to see HMAC there, but Caleb was like, you know, it's pretty involved to do it, so we never even built it out all the way at Summer Boot Camp. Perhaps if we'd been catching on quicker, we probably would have gone into that further. But we had a beginner's group, and I include myself in that category at Boot Camp compared to Caleb. All right, so, uh, so uh, another way you can do it is with Gorilla. And so here's Gorilla. Gorilla Toolkit, and it's uh, built for Go. And you can do context, a MUX. So what's a MUX? What's MUX stand for? Multiplexer, right? So routing. Uh, secure cookie sessions, WebSocket. I'm not sure what RPC is or schema. Converts form values to a struct. Interesting. But uh, if we look at sessions or a secure cookie, if we look at secure cookie, we've got like old school 4.3. Window today. We can see the hash key is required used to authenticate the cookie value using HMAC. Okay? It's recommended to, to use a key with 32 or 64 bytes. <clears throat> really wish I'd studied computer science when I'd gone to school. Some of the stuff is like, oh, I'd like to take an entire class in encryption, so I totally understand that more thoroughly. But Somehow I got old, man. Like, I went to school like 1989, went to college. Right? So I graduated from high school, trip out. So, uh, HMAC, road of reflection there. And, uh, and so we could also do sessions here. Provides cookie and file system sessions and infrastructure for custom session backends. So, cookie and file system sessions. Versus a uh, cookie is uh, uh, encodes and decodes authenticated and optionally encrypted cookie value, values. Encodes and decodes can't be forged because their values are val validated using HMAC. So sessions, uh, here we have uh, sessions new cookie store. We did Gorilla Sessions. So we went straight to, uh, we could have done secure cookie that might be fun to play with so maybe we could try that as an exercise right but we did we did uh, the sessions one gorilla sessions and so uh, imported gorilla sessions and then sessions new cookie store and if we come over here there should be like some reference or something API and we have new cookie store New cookie, cookie store, new cookie store. Type cookie store, uh, store sessions using uh, secure cookies. So it's actually creating a session where we're storing data. Like not only the you know, you know, uh, unique ID, but other stuff. So we have a secure cookie codec. It's a slice and options. Pointer to options. So if we do a uh, new cookie store, type cookie store, is that a new cookie store gives us a pointer to a cookie store, returns a new cookie store. Keys are defined in pairs to allow key rotation, but the common case is a single authentication key and optionally an encryption key. First key in a pair is used for authentication, the second for encryption. The encryption key can be set to nil or omitted in the last pair. But then once we have a, a new cookie store, we've got git, max age, new, and save. Git, new, save, max age. Those are like four methods we have. So <clears throat> do a new cookie store, takes a slice byte and a secret password. So new cookie store takes a slice of byte. Key pairs. It's funny, like reading documentation, I wouldn't necessarily know that, 
you know, I, I think, oh, it's supposed to be pairs here to allow key rotation, but we just kind of did one, right? I wouldn't necessarily know from reading this that this is how I'd implement that. It's kind of interesting. And then we have a, a function where we set a session and uh, store.get request session. And so what's store.get do? Git returns a session for the given name after adding it to the registry. So git name. It returns a new session if the session doesn't exist. Access is new on the session to check if it is an existing session or a new one. It returns a new session and error if the session exists but cannot be decoded. So request uh, form value email is equal to nothing. Then request form value email right, is equal to the session email. So if, uh, if when we look at the form, if it's not equal to empty, right, then whatever was sent in the form becomes the email we're going to store in the session. Then we save the session. And then we're writing back to the response session values email. So we're writing the email back. And, uh, and then we have our routing down here. So let's see what happens when we run this. 38. Am I on 9,000? 8080. So look at our cookie now, right? Let's just clear that. And refresh. Pretty crazy looking cookie. And enter an email. All right, and so now we're able to send that email over, store it on the on the client's machine, and then it's encrypted. And then when we get this data back, we can pull that email out. So and display the email. So the uh, store git, we got a session, and then we store that and we save it, right? And then we're, we're writing from the cookie whatever that email value was. But that was the encrypted one. So all that's happening behind the scenes. Encryption. So do you guys want to try? Uh, we used on that one. We use sessions. Do you want to try just secure cookie? You want to try building an example up with just cookie? Mm -hmm. Based on that? Okay, so let's do that. So look up Gorilla Web Toolkit and go to secure cookie. And then also look up this example on GitHub right here. Give you a little bit of a template. And let's all try to do it, including myself, because I haven't done it yet. 